In this recording, we are going to look at how some specific enzymes function. We're going to look specifically at an enzyme called chymotrypsin. And if you remember from previous lectures, chymotrypsin cuts on the carboxyl side of aromatics and bulky nonpolar R groups. This protease, or enzyme that degrades proteins, is similar to trypsin. It's also similar to one called carboxypeptidase A. Carboxypeptidase A cuts on the carboxyl side of phenylalanine and tyrosine. And these two proteins have very similar ways that they go about cleaving peptide bonds. We're also going to talk about, not in this video, but later on, about zymogens. These are inactive forms of these enzymes, and that is how they're regulated. Chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidase A, trypsin, all the other peptidases are known as hydrolases. So hydrolases use H2O to break or to cut peptide bonds. Right, so if we remember, peptide bonds are formed through a dehydration reaction, so hydrolases just reverse that, and they add a water to break the peptide. So we're going to focus in on the mechanism of chymotrypsin. Chymotrypsin is commonly found and secreted from the pancreas. So here is chymotrypsin. Now chymotrypsin and all these other peptidases have a very interesting arrangement of R groups. And this arrangement as you can see looks kinda like this. And this is serine histidine, and aspartate, or aspartic acid. So serine, histidine, and aspartate form what's known as the catalytic triad. And the reason why they form a catalytic triad is because of, or the reason why these three are usually found together is due to the stability that they give within their hydrogen bonds. And that histidine can ask it act as a general acid as well as a general base to help perform its reaction. So let's say to this chymotrypsin we have a generic peptide bond. Oops. Let's draw the oxygen on the bottom. So here's our peptide bond. What ends up happening is that the pull from this negatively charged oxygen of the aspartic acid is so strong that it'll actually pull the electron density away allowing this nitrogen to pull the hydrogen off the serine R group allowing the oxygen to attack this carbon allowing those electrons to flow up onto the oxygen this occurs very quickly So what we have now is we have our peptide still bound to the enzyme. We have our serine that's bound to the peptide we have this histidine which has been protonated and then we have the aspartic acid, still hydrogen bonding and so then what happens is we're going to use another color 
is that this oxygen is going to come back and form a double bond and when it forms a double bond that carbon now has five so we're going to break the peptide bond here it's going to pull off the hydrogen that was placed on the histidine and those electrons are going to go flowing back to the nitrogen so when we do that we now have this. So now instead of the full peptide, we have the cleaved peptide still bound to the serine. We have the histidine. that has been regenerated and is still hydrogen bonding to this aspartic acid R group. Plus, we're given the rest of our protein. All right, so we said chymotrypsin was a peptidase. It broke peptide bonds using water. And so this right here this intermediate, because we still haven't completed the reaction. This intermediate is known as an acyl enzyme intermediate. So it forms an acyl, right? So acyl enzyme intermediate. And the evidence for this model, the reason why we know that first step happens real quick and then it slowly occurs is because we use this molecule to test these proteins. So this is P nitrophenyl acetate. Right? So when we incubate chymotrypsin or these other peptidases in the presence of p nitrophenyl acetate it does its it, it removes the acetate group or the acetate off of this and it makes this so it performs the same chemistry just with this molecule instead of a, a peptide chain and this is d nitro phenol phenol when p nitrophenyl acetate turns into d nitrophenol it becomes yellow so it turns yellow that we can visualize it and so when we do this type of analysis, we can measure about how the rate with which we get release. So, we're, we, so we have this. Let's go ahead and erase all of this. Because we got rid of the rest of the peptide. We know how it acts now. And so we have this intermediate, the acyl intermediate. So what happens next? So I told you that the, this histidine, our group, can act as a general acid or a general base. Here, it's going to act, in this context, it is going to act as a general base. When it acts as a general base, it's known as general base catalysis. So how does it act as a general base? Well, we said water is used to break these peptide bonds. So this lone pair on this nitrogen 
comes over and removes this hydrogen. When that happens, let me change the color to, so we can see the flow of the arrows. So this lone pair comes over, removes that hydrogen from water. When that occurs, this electron will then attack this carbonyl group. When that happens, electrons flow up, electrons come back down, and when they come back down, they will release the serine to grab the hydrogen from the histidine. Right, So the histidine grabs the hydrogen to activate, if you will, the water molecule. The water molecule then re attacks the free carboxyl end, releasing it from the serine. Well, the serine needs to have another hydrogen, and so it grabs it from the histidine again, catalytic triad. So, when that happens, you get this. You get serine. Histidine. H. And aspartate. Back. Right? Because for, for an enzyme to be a catalyst, you need to regenerate it. Plus, you now have a free C terminus from the protein or peptide that you did this. So, let's say we're talking about, so this is for chymotrypsin, trypsin, a lot of those other digestive enzymes. Let's say we're talking about carboxypeptidase. Carboxypeptidase has a very similar layout of its active site. The only difference is that instead of serine histidine and aspartic acid or aspartate R groups, it uses zinc. So it's going to use zinc to help coordinate that peptide bond and it's also going to use some general base. Right? Because it's a general base catalysis. So it needs a general base. So that's how they slightly differ. It's the same exact chemistry, the same exact orientation. Everything is exactly the same. Except instead of using R groups, it is now using a metal. And so this is known as a metalloenzyme. Metallo enzyme. So when does carboxypeptidase, chymotrypsin, any of those act? Well, they might act after you have a nice breakfast of milk and cereal. Milk and cereal, milk and cereal, cereal and milk. Milk, 